No, your eyes aren't playing tricks on you. We are talking about the whole Oni trilogy in one video. Sons of Garmadon, Hunted, and March of the Oni are three seasons that follow one continuous story. This is where most of the fans agree Ninjago peaked in its storytelling, characters, and themes. Sit back, relax, maybe get some M&Ms or something because this might be one of my longest videos yet. Immediately, I love the opening scene to Sons of Garmadon. The music and colors really speak to my soul. We see six familiar figures sneaking their way to Borg Tower. Why? I couldn't tell ya. Okay, I'll tell you. It's for this dope looking mask, which they steal. That's when the Green Ninja. Huh? Who are they? Who are you? What have you done with Lloyd? This imposter takes out all the thieves besides his green counterpart. Coordinates, Master Lloyd. Wait, Lloyd? I can kiss you, Pix. But you don't have a squeaky and annoying voice. Okay, that bit's done. Yes, Lloyd has gotten himself a new voice actor who I like way more than the first one. I'm sorry if that upsets you, but Sam Vincent is way better. He's also Master Lloyd now, as the end of Season 7 set up. The assailant who is later called Mr. E gets away. We see what the other ninja are up to, and boy howdy, the visuals look better than ever. Cole and Jay have gotten a bad case of having different designs, and they tell us that it's been a year since the end of Season 7. They are on the hunt for Master Wu, who disappeared in time. Yo, it's the mechanic! Wait, Zane looks like his old self. Maybe his design is taking him back to before he was rebuilt. Oh, never mind. Everyone meets up and we see all of their new looks. Let's get this conversation out of the way. This season came after the movie. The movie had new designs for the characters, which people didn't like very much. They brought the designs to the show to kind of connect the two so the movie audience would check out the show. People still don't like it, but these are much better than the older designs. I love them. And they even make Lloyd's new voice canon in the show. They describe it as puberty. If puberty involved a grown-ass man's voice coming out of a child's body, Lloyd shows them the symbol of a biker gang in Ninjago named the Sons of Garmadon. Now where have I heard that before? Hmm. This random guy tells them that the thieves at the start of the episode stole an Oni mask. One of three that exist, which have powers of a species called the Oni. This is Mr. Hutchins. I guess this is Hutchins. The ninja are hired to protect the royal family. Wait, so Ninjago has had a royal family this whole time? There's a president later, so where do these guys come from? Zane gets ready to JFK someone, and terrorism ensues. There's no threat, however. They are invited into the castle, and we are introduced to Harumi, the daughter of the king and queen. And Nia. The girl. Hey, I already made that joke. Harumi is adopted by the royal family. They actually have an Oni mask of deception, where the red one in the opening is the mask of vengeance. After hearing of the first mask being stolen, why would you keep the mask out in the open instead of, I don't know, a vault? The ninja stay overnight to guard the royal family, and Harumi is gone. Great. Not a bad first episode. Nothing crazy happens, but it doesn't need to. This theme song marks the first time a variation of the weekend whip isn't used. And how does it stack up, you ask? It's cool going through the city and seeing a big Garmadon, but it's middle around. Lloyd sets out to catch the princess Nappa. This Nappa is the princess, giving food to the filthy peasants. How noble. The two bond over their shared pressure to live up to expectations. Samurai X is still running around, protecting people, and uh-oh, Hutchins is here. The team spar and give Lloyd dating advice, which is a cute scene to have with our guys. And now, Cut to Ultraviolet being crazy. There's a flashback of Wu meeting Cole for the first time, which we haven't seen since the pilot episodes. This is to show how Wu's disappearance has affected Cole, and he feels responsible to find him because Wu found Cole all that time ago. Cole discovers that the castle is about to explode, and chaos ensues. The sons of Garmadon invade the palace and attempt multiple assassinations. Mr. E uses the Mask of Vengeance to grow more arms and swords. He makes quick work of the ninja who have been training for multiple years and can shoot elements from their hands. Kai burns the Mask of Deception, but it was a fake. Lloyd has the real mask. Lloyd and Harumi escape with the mask, with not Harley Quinn hot on their ass. Harumi drops the important artifact that shouldn't be dropped, and they escape on the bounty. Apparently the king and queen died. That's two sets of parents this girl has lost. Cole makes a bad pun, and it's confirmed that Jay pees his pants. Lloyd, Cole, Jay, and Zane head to the police station to interrogate a member of the Sons of Garmadon for information. They decide to stop by Miss Darke's shop to get some truth tea. Lloyd sees a painting in her shop that intrigues him. Cole and Zane are sent to the police station, while the other two stay to listen to Miss Darke's tale. The interrogation doesn't go so well, as Cole drinks the truth tea. Cole pees in public pools, and they find the Sons of Garmadon's hideout. The story called The Oni and the Dragon is told to Lloyd and Jay. One of the 16 realms, 
the first realm, was inhabited by Oni, evil beings who could destroy, and dragons who had the power to create. This confirms where dragons came from, as they did have the ability to travel between the different realms, all the way back in the pilot episodes. But the lore doesn't stop there. A war broke out between the two species. A child was born, half dragon and half oni. He wanted to stop the war, but he didn't succeed. So he abandoned the realm and created a new one called Ninjago. Wait a minute, this is the origin for the first Binjutsu Master, which blew me away when I first watched this. It's great to finally have some backstory to this godlike being that we don't see often. The Oni mask come from the first realm, and if reunited, will resurrect Garmadon. What the hell? It won't be the nice sensei Garmadon we once had. It would be one unable to love. Dun dun dun. Zane and Cole infiltrate the Sons of Garmadon's bar hideout, and... <sighs> Hello, Dareth. Cole's performing past comes back, and Cole's cover is blown. The others are worried about their lead going cold, so they head in there themselves. They chase Mr. E into a dead end, with only way being up. Man, this would have been bad if they didn't know Air Jitsu. They don't have Air Jitsu. No matter, at least they can use their elemental dragons. They don't have elemental dragons either. So, the creators of the show thought the ninja were too overpowered at this point, so they stopped including their extra abilities. They stated once that Air Jitsu was dark magic, and the characters didn't want to use dark magic, so they don't anymore. And their dragons don't exist anymore because their fear makes it too risky to use. It's a shame, but we can't do anything about it. This change would have all been fine if they explained it in the show, but they never do, so we have to rely on outside sources, which can confuse returning viewers. Mr. E fends them all off with laundry, but Lloyd manages to get the upper hand. Zane swoops in to save Mr. E and... Ew, gross hoods. Zane has earned the Sons of Garmadon's trust. Speaking of Zane, we get another flashback to Wu meeting him. We find out how Zane became the Master of Ice. The previous master found himself stranded in the woods where Dr. Julian and Zane lived. They gave him shelter and he decided that Zane was worthy to wield his power. The way most elemental masters get their abilities is from inheriting it from their ancestors. Zane obviously didn't have ancestors because... He's a fucking robot. So it's nice to get a little bit more lore. A search is conducted for Zane by the others as he finds himself in the belly of the beast. Cole is restrained by Vengestone with the key to finding the last mask in the cell across from him. Zane is introduced to Kilo, the third general of the Sons of Garmadon. Zane's mission is going well. He might actually succeed. Jaguars a spy. <sighs> Cole is at least being productive, breaking out of his cell using his incredible singing skills. Cole kicks a box with a baby in it. That's not a key. Baby hijinks ensue. Kilo uses the mask of deception to levitate shit. That's cool. Mr. E is sent after Zane. He thinks Mr. E is the quiet one, which is the alias of the leader of the Sons of Garmadon. After a bike crash, Mr. E's arm falls off. Ew! Oh wait, he's a robot too. Here's a fun behind the scene fact. Mr. E was conceptualized to be a duplicate of Zane, which would have been an interesting twist. This duplicate was built by Dr. Julian, but the quiet one took them and reprogrammed them. It was storyboarded and he even had some lines. Discarded replica, an experiment left to rust. <laughs> which are definitely something. I'd much rather what we ended up with. Zane and Mr. E engage in a fight, one-on-one. -on -one. Robot hijinks ensue. I love this fight. Getting an extended one-on-one -on -one fight is so refreshing after having most fights in Ninjago be in groups. Zane doesn't really use his normal powers, however. He uses the power of getting his ass handed to him. Mr. E places something in his chest. The show treats this moment as a character death with the music from Zane's sacrifice from season three playing, but this doesn't have the same weight as last time because we know he can easily be revived. I know that fake out deaths are hated by many, but this one is probably the worst one. Besides later on, but we'll get there. The ninja finds Zane's dead body, and I guess Cole met up with the others. That dungeon doesn't hold people very well. Lloyd and Harumi flirt some more, and Lloyd is too much of a sigma to get ladies. Pixel deciphers the message Mr. E sent out to the quiet one after Zane's ass whooping, revealing a trap being placed. Also, she is triangulating where the quiet one's message came from. Cole finds out that the key for the third mask was a map wrapped around the baby. It's like taking clothes from a baby. Hang on. The ninja just purposefully ignored the warning of a trap being placed. And now this spider bot is sabotaging the bounty. Pixel is forced to reveal to the group that she is Samurai X. Whoa, whoa, what? The bug takes control of the Samurai X mech and terrorizes the team. Ninja are no match for a big killer robot, apparently. And Harumi is taken. Lloyd jumps off the ship mid-fight to rescue her, but this takes them straight down to the surface. 
Yeah, okay, but what happens if she lands on her head? The bug is destroyed by Zane, as he has awoken, which makes the fake out at the start of the episode even more pointless. Jay, Kai, and Cole take Samurai X down, but she still manages to take out the engine, which sends them into a freefall. But Nia makes it not a freefall using the rain. I had to keep my identity a secret to protect those I cared about. What? Why? They can each handle themselves. That's stupid, Pixel. You're stupid. Everyone survives, obviously, with Lloyd only suffering a small case of having a broken arm. Harumi and Lloyd are separated from the rest with the map in hand. Team Crash Landing is fixing the bounty while Larumi is making their way through the jungle. Cole has become the mother to the baby, which is a fun reflection of his caring personality. Cole has gotten a lot of personality in this season, which was his biggest flaw in seasons prior. Gone are the days of Cole's personality being, I like cake. We even get pixel development. She wants to be useful to the team, but she hates the thought of getting stuck in a computer. It's a nice character moment, which was unexpected. The sons of Garmadon are catching up to the ninja, and um, the baby is walking. That was quick. The child grabs a cup of tea and spits out this line. Ninja never quit. <laughs> Oh my god, that's Master Wu! Yes, another great plot twist. Mmm, I love this season. Team Ow My Arm Is Broken find a boat. But wait, Lloyd's arm is fine now? The two have a nice heart-to-heart -heart about Lloyd's daddy issues. Nia puts together that Wu was probably turned into a baby after getting touched by the reversal blade from last season. And the Iron Doom spat him out at this moment in time. The sons of Garmadon are here, and Samurai X, I mean, Pixel, hold them off. Larumi is attacked by a river lobster, but they lose it. Things can't possibly get any worse. Oh. Pixel's tracing is finished when she was looking for the quiet one, and the source came from the bounty. It was Harumi. That's the twist. It was Harumi. This reveal is done way better when Lloyd figures it out, so I don't get why they had the urge to do it twice. I think twist villains work the best when it's a surprise, but when you look back at their past actions, it makes more sense. Like, Harumi has shown that she is pretty skilled with a sword, but when Lloyd starts to question it, she distracts him. This makes so much more sense with this reveal! Anyway, our battle begins on the bounty and the ninja are captured. Flashback time! Wait a minute! That's season one! This is Harumi's backstory and how she lost her parents. Sorry, her first parents. They were killed in a collapsing building when the devourer attacked. She heard how Garmadon murdered the snake, which took her down the path she's on now. I completely forgot this is where she got the name The Quiet One. Back in the present, the two find the Oni Temple and ascend into it. The sons of Garmadon commandeer the bounty. Harumi suggests Lloyd grab it. How does she know Lloyd has Oni blood? Yeah, she knows all about the Oni and dragons. Lloyd puts it together and figures out her secret. This is such a good scene as her facade slowly fades away as she tries to gaslight Lloyd. You can really feel the betrayal in Lloyd's words and actions. He also learns that the baby is Wu, and a fight over the mask begins! Harumi has successfully planted her roots into Lloyd's head. She tries using his love for her to distract him, but Lloyd is a Sigma male. This is such a beautiful scene. Go watch it because I can't talk about it all. Harumi powers up with the Mask of Hatred, which makes her invincible. But the others are free, so a standoff begins. Lloyd is spat out of the waterfall, and that giant crab comes back. Both groups team up to fight the crab, with the Sons of Garmadon taking the bounty. Lloyd pursues, and gets taken. I don't know what his plan was, but it was bad. The group ride Krabby back to Ninjago City. Pirate Genie? Pirate Genie? Yes, why not? Anything can happen. Oh, oh, oh! Skybound reference! Apparently the royal family's castle was built around a temple of resurrection, which wasn't destroyed in the explosion. Misako is here as well. Harumi needs the hair of all those who are closest to Garmadon, so that's why she's captured the brother, the wife, and the son. Which makes Wu's kidnapping make much more sense. The police distract the sons of Garmadon, so the ninja can sneak past them. Lloyd is still feeling super betrayed, which sparks some major trust issues, but Ruby doesn't have an ounce of guilt. She never had feelings for him. She was just using him the whole time. Harumi has become one of Ninjago's best villains because of all this. Keep this all in mind for later because things get a little controversial in a later season. Oh, and by the way, the ritual has started and she has connected to the departed realm. All right, two things. One, in season five, we saw that Garbodon was trapped in the cursed realm. So my question is, how did he end up in the departed realm? I'm assuming that the departed realm is where things go when they actually die. And Garmadon was technically a ghost in the preeminent when it died. And we see that in season 11 that the preeminent was in the departed realm. So did Garmadon pass over with it? I don't know, but I'm sure someone will tell me in the comments. Second thing, are the only masks responsible for bringing him back in his evil form? Because he was last seen a regular guy. Who knows, but the ninja are here. Through the power of friendship, 
They stop the ritual and Harumi goes to jail. But wait, there's two more episodes left. Oh shit, he's here. The newly awakened Garmadon steals a garbage truck and breaks out Harumi while the ninjas sing the classic weekend whip. Lloyd still suffers from having a broken heart. She tried to kill you, get over it, bro. A convenient news broadcast informs the ninja of Garmadon's return. I'm not really minding Darith in this season. He isn't as annoying as he usually is. Harumi and Garmadon use Cryptarium Prism as a base. That's metal as hell. Garmadon is a good example of a fake out death done very well. Instead of coming back as soon as they die, it's taken four seasons for him to come back. But as they say, he's not the same man. He's just pure evil, but as we see later, he gets new development. Lloyd locks the ninja and Pixel on the bounty to take on Garmadon himself. They are stuck in a room made of wood, so um, just use your elemental powers, duh. Thank you, Cole. Lloyd is pissed. Harumi has fucked with his feelings, brought back his dad who died peacefully, and now about to take over his city. Lloyd and Garmadon fight, with Garmadon actually using his elemental power of destruction. He's always had it, but we've never seen him use it like this. Their fight is broadcast to everyone in the area. The fight is fueling Garmadon, causing him to unlock his true potential. Lloyd gets his new face caved in, while everyone watches. Ninjago City's champion has fallen. The ninja collect Lloyd and take him to Mistake's tea shop. Garmadon is going around conquering villages with his giant stone Gundam. The ninja need to risk their elemental powers to heal Lloyd, which is a little odd, but sure. They do it, and they do keep their powers. Cool, but uh, Lloyd doesn't. The kaiju makes its way through the city, trampling everything as it goes. The team does combat with the kaiju, barely. Nia takes Lloyd. For some reason, Wu is able to sense Garmadon like he's in part 3 of Jojo's. Garmadon shows up to squash Wu, with Misako and Nia holding him off, barely. Lloyd again tries to appeal to Harumi's heart, but in response, she pulls out the mask of hatred, god damn. Tram escape. The others bring the bounty around to get Lloyd, and they do- oh, never mind. Wu is safe. But Harumi has Lloyd. The Garmadon giant grabs the bounty and begins to crush it. Before they pancaked, they use the Traveler's Tea they got from Mistake to disappear right before they die. Lloyd thinks they died though. Lloyd vows to continue fighting Harumi as he jumps away in a bit that recreates what Mr. E did in the first episode. The original four are transported to the realm of Oni and Dragon. And that's where Sons of Garmadon ends. This season is such a good time, even watching it for the fifth time. The characters were in tip-top shape, the plot was excellently thought out, and there's a gripping cliffhanger to end it. It's obvious how much time and effort was put in to make this season such a great one. And let's hope Hunted continues this trend. Some time has passed between seasons. Let's see what's been happening. Chaos floods the streets as Ultraviolet runs a TV show about hunting people down. <gasps> Hunted, no way. Honestly, I would watch that. Darith is found and bullied by some thugs, but makes it back to the Resistance hideout. Lloyd is leading the Resistance and is doing some training. Emperor Garmadon is a little mad about Lloyd going unfound for so long, so he sends Mr. E after them. The original ninja are trying to contact someone from Ninjago, but, uh, I hate to tell them, but... They're in another realm. Jay is also acting very kooky. I'm just saying. You don't have to freak out about it. <laughs> Wu has aged up a little more, but he is still a child, so he isn't much help yet. I love the slap together suits they wear. They are their Sons of Garmadon outfits, but with modifications added. Cole and Wu are scavenging for food when they stumble upon a dragon. Cole remembers why he was scared of dragons as it attacks them. They hide in a rock hole. Jay has lost it even more. It's my new video game console. I built it myself. They intercept a radio signal, which says something about an ambush. Huh, I wonder what that could be. Oh. I guess it's Pixel's turn to beat the shit out of Lloyd, but his powers are still non-existent. They are forced to leave as Mr. E finds their compound. They hide among trash, where they also find the remains of the bounty and a leaf of traveler's tea. The sons of Garmadon find them in an alley, and they are saved by the other elemental masters. Let's go! Wu and Cole find... Well, I don't find the others. Ew, who's that? They are brought to the foot and peg leg of Iron Baron, the leader of the dragon hunters. They think the ninja are Oni because anything that is different is evil. Ooh, ooh, the theme song as well. It's a more chaotic version of the sons of Garmadon one, and it sounds so fucking cool. The weirdos capture dragons and either kill them or use them as slaves. Lloyd meets the rest of the Elemental Masters again, but Skylar reintroduces everyone, even though Lloyd knows who they are. 
I get it's to introduce them to new audiences, but it's a tad distracting. Miss Dake is also here. Oh, bye Mr. E, nice knowing you. I don't really like the trope of evil rulers getting mad because their underlings don't succeed. The Nightmare King from Dreams also comes to mind. Get your ass in there, Garmadon. The originals are placed in a pit to fight a dragon. Having the original characters from the pilots be split up from the newer characters is kind of nostalgic. Cole and Wu infiltrate the Hunter Society to watch their friends get torn apart. The ninja use their chains to wrap up the dragon, but Zayn is forced to save Jay using his ice. Using his powers probably wasn't a good idea, as Iron Baron recognized the similarities with the first Minjutsu Master. Remember, he came from this realm. A hunter referred to as Heavy Metal uses their sword to attract their powers and tie them up. Miss Darko wants to use Karloff to help with training, but not for Lloyd. It's for Hello Darth and Lloyd, kind of. Lloyd has to lead Darth to victory, but it doesn't go to plan. Wu makes fun of an amputee, and the hunters set off with the ninja to hunt some dragons. The Resistance plans to take over the airways in Ninjago by sneaking into Borg Tower, but it's heavily guarded. They kind of sneak in pretty easily, but... Uh-oh, here comes Garmadon. Lloyd encourages Skylar to try and combine two powers she absorbs, so she uses Shade and Mr. Pale's ability to put up an invisible barrier to hide from Garmadon. This is so cool! I love when they give more uses to the character's powers. It's a shame Skylar doesn't show up much. The ninja are getting tickled so much that Kai gets set on fire, uh-oh. Wait, what element does he control again? Their elemental powers can attract dragons, so they're bait for now. Cole and Wu learn of the Firstborn, which is the mother of all dragons. The sword Heavy Metal has is made from bone from the Firstborn. Iron Baron wants to find its nest, which contains armor worn by the first Binjitsu Master, and use it to control Firstborn. Before any more exposition can be spoken, a dragon shows up. It's a wind dragon, and it escapes with the hunters on its trail. The Resistance successfully breaks into the studio, and Lloyd goes live, speaking to and inspiring all of Ninjago. Harumi tries to stop Lloyd by making him relive his ass whooping, but he presses on and then dips. I love Lloyd's leadership moments. They are done so well. Jay's turn for a flashback with Wu, and Jay even hears Lloyd's broadcast through one of the hunters' radios, giving them hope. The hunters take the dragon back to their base camp, with the promise of eating it, uh-oh. The ninja plan to build a fake firstborn to act as a distraction. The resistance brainstorm others who can join them, but they don't have many options. Cole actually builds the fake dragon from scraps, but it's too heavy for Cole to fly, so Wu has to do it. Garmadon threatens to Mr. E. Harumi, but she is saved by her knowledge of their hideout. What's Darith up to? Well, he wants powers of his own, so Miss Darke brews him a giant potion to drink. But forget that, it's dragon time. Wu sets off, and it actually flies. Is it unrealistic that they made a helicopter out of scrap? Yes, but this is the same show with a 1,000 year old baby. The presence of Firstborn sends the hunters into a frenzy and they manage to knock Wu out of the sky. But then, suddenly, the real Firstborn shows up, sending everyone into even more of a frenzy. The ninja fight off the hunters again while Kai frees the dragon and slips back into his Sons of Garmadon outfit. It's been a while since we saw that error. Hey, Darith finished that potion and he gets elemental power. Green. I mean brown. He goes to pee outside and sees the Sons of Garmadon approaching the hideout. The Sons of Garmadon attack, and there are some fun moments. Skylar using multiple powers, Kilo playing with Shade and Turner, like toys, and Darith pees. Lloyd, Nia, Skylar, and Darith escape in a tank, but Garmadon's Colossus doesn't like that. They get stomped on, but Pixel manages to distract him long enough to get away. She is also taken. What's this? The first Binjitsu master is talking. What is this? Wu's a teenager now, and we actually get a hint of what the ninja's ages are. Kai says they're still teenagers. The ninja are ambushed by Heavy Metal, who actually switches sides. This is Faith. She wants to help the ninja. Darith doesn't have his brown powers anymore. He literally flushed them away. A rat approaches, but it's actually Miss Starke. The ninja parallel the pilot episode with them hauling Wu around. Iron Baron forced Faith to wear a mask because he didn't want anyone knowing that his best hunter is a woman. Iron Baron is canonically sexist. The hunters start to catch up, so they put on an act, then commit Grand Theft Auto. Iron Baron catches up to the Grand Theft Auto and they head off after the ninja. Miss Starke reveals her only heritage. She came to Ninjago looking for the first Binjitsu master when he created it, but she fell in love with the realm, so she turned on the other Oni. The hunters catch up and chase the ninja while they do their best to fight them off. Can I mention that the ninja have spent the whole season struggling to fight off these hunters 
when they have faced more powerful foes before. It's just weird that people with elemental powers have trouble with people with chains. Anyway, the hunters place a tracker on the ninja. They end up at Oni land. Does this mean we get to see these Oni that we've heard so much about? Well... We'll have to wait. Let's check in with Ninjago. Garmadon shares with Harumi some of the thoughts he's been having. Harumi offers to be his daughter? Hmm, okay, that's a little strange. I know she worships him, but there's no way Garmadon would care. The ninja enter an Oni stronghold, but there isn't any Oni. They had all left the realm by this point. This angers Faith, as Iron Baron has been using the hunter's fear of these Oni to control them. Just as they're about to give up on the dragon armor, they find a map on the back of a gate. Hirumi comes for Lloyd, so Lloyd leads them away from everyone else. But wait, didn't Lloyd burn his outfit? Oh, it's Mistake. Nia separates Kilo, and Skylar takes out the henchmen, leaving Harumi alone with Lloyd, Darith, and Nia. Harumi is tied up, but she still tries to worm herself into Lloyd's head. Skylar finds the Mask of Hatred, which causes Lloyd to get suspicious of Harumi's actions. Faith trains the ninja in using the hunter's chains, and we get a training montage. Can't say we see many of those. Wu gives up, and it's Kai who gives him a pep talk. Wu manages to get a handle on it. Lloyd changes back into his green outfit, for real this time, but again, he burnt it. I guess he has other pairs. Mistako transforms into Harumi to enact a plan. They will try and get Skylar close enough to Garmadon to touch him, absorbing his powers so she can control the Colossus. The hunters again catch up with the ninja, which highlights my problem with the season. It is really great, but the first realm plot feels like a drag sometimes. Also, having two plots happen simultaneously is a fun concept, but man, it's a bitch to script. Anyway, chasing, chasing, Iron Baron takes Faith's sword, the ninja upgrade vehicles, and Faith is taken. Darith is somehow restrained by Harumi, and she gets away, but the plan is set in motion. Miss Dake gets Skylar pretty close, but Garmadon is hesitant. The real Harumi arrives, and the jig is up. We get our first look at an actual Oni, as Miss Dake transforms into her true form. She has a striking resemblance to Garmadon, which shows how Garmadon's appearance was always tied back to his Oni heritage. Miss Dake makes a big stick, and Skylar gets Garmadon's powers. She escapes, but leaves Miss Dake with Garmadon. She is actually killed by Garmadon. Like, she's gone. For good. The ninja try to save Faith, but uh-oh, it's a trap. And they are captured again. Still pretty repetitive. Faith plants seeds in the hunter's heads of Iron Baron's manipulation, and Wu regains his memories after a shock. He even sprouts a little goatee. He swiftly takes on all the hunters, with Iron Baron offering Wu a deal. He gets the dragon armor for Iron Baron, and he'll let the ninja go home. Wu obviously accepts the deal. Skylar makes it back to Lloyd and friends, and she tries to control the Colossus. She eventually controls the beast. They play tug of war with it, but Garmadon's power starts to poison Skylar. Harumi is caught up in a building, saving a kid who is going through what happened to her when the Devourer attacked. Everyone watches as the building collapses under her. This kills Harumi, which actually upsets Garmadon. Harumi's character arc was really engaging to watch. She will go down as one of Ninjago's best villains, if she didn't show up and crystallized, but we'll get there. Bro, Garmadon is not happy. The Resistance retreats, and Nia has a stupid idea. Nia? Have you ever tried to throw a person? Kai has an idea to free themselves from the poles. He wants to rock it side to side, which everyone thinks is stupid, but they do it anyway. That gave me a good belly laugh. Wu and Iron Baron have a back and forth, and I love how clearly Wu has changed since he got his memories back. Before, he was very unsure and very headstrong about everything, but now he's more confident and smart about everything he does and says. He's also very kind to Iron Baron, which shows that he sticks to his philosophy of making an enemy your friend. Iron Baron almost falls to his death, but Wu saves him. The Pole Boys and Faith actually get the Poles rockin', but they don't need to do too much as the Hunters let them go. They realize Iron Baron's selfishness, and the ninja set out to stop him, but whoop, how are they gonna get past this gap? Maybe Air Jitsu? Ultraviolet finds the resistance, but Nia gets bested by a pole and a car. Luckily, Lloyd rams Ultraviolet with the tank and breaks the Mask of Hatred. Nia's shoulder is fucked, and they're about to be fucked anyway. Wu and Baron find themselves in the middle of the Firstborn's nest, surrounded by dragons. Baron is about to take the armor, but, uh, I think he has bigger problems. Instead of, I don't know, running away, Iron Baron puts on the armor. He commands the Firstborn to kill Wu, but she doesn't listen. Wu reflects on everything he's learnt from the ninja. Confidence, responsibility, sense of humor, and listening to one's inner voice. But he also learns something from Baron. The unstoppable power of fibbing. 
The dragon armor doesn't control the firstborn. So Iron Baron dies. There is so much death in this season. Wu takes the bone sword, the armor, and the respect of Firstborn and celebrates with the ninja. The hunters also celebrate Baron's brutal death. Faith vows to stay in the first realm to lead the hunters and make a change while the ninja climb aboard elemental dragons once again to fly through a portal to Ninjago. The music in this whole ending scene goes unbelievably hard and makes it feel like a massive W. This season is so fucking good. The Resistance watches as the ninja return, shocked by the state of Ninjago City. They all reunite and catch up. The team split in classic Ninjago fashion. The four original ninja head off to stop the Colossus, and they actually wear their goofy hoods. They haven't worn them all season. Lloyd and Wu set out to fight Garmadon. No, even Dareth has a shit hood. The prisoners in Cryptarium break out of their cells. Strap yourselves in, it's a two-on-one family battle. Well. Three against one, actually. Not even Firstborn is able to stop Garmadon because it's the fight that fuels him. Wu is knocked off the building and Lloyd is left to face his father. The ninja are having trouble chaining up the Colossus, but Kai has a plan. Kai actually does a lot in this season. Lloyd manages to take back the bone sword, which Garmadon refers to as his father's sword. But didn't the hunters in the first realm forge it? It doesn't really matter, but it's something I noticed. Lloyd still tries to change Garmadon's mind, so he beats Lloyd up. The sword is thrown off the building as well. What will Lloyd do now? He realizes what Garmadon said before was literal. The fight does fuel him. It gives him his power. So Lloyd doesn't fight. Instead, he resists him like he's been doing the whole season. This is just like the lesson Sensei Garmadon taught Lloyd in season three, to fight without fighting. All their allies show up and now they all take it down. Garmadon is powerless, and this victory allows Lloyd to regain his powers and his green eyes. Skylar is healed from Garmadon's power poison. Skylar was actually a big player in this season. After season four, I never expected her to have a major role in the story, but she's a good character, so I'm glad they brought her back to do stuff. Garmadon tells Lloyd someone is coming, but he doesn't say who exactly. Yay, robot hugs. And hey, Wu's aged back to his old fart self. Everyone celebrates the ninja's defeat over Garmadon. Wu and Lloyd discuss the first realm, and Lloyd realizes that it's the Oni that are coming. Bam, that's another season complete. An excellent ending to two of the best seasons of Ninjago, but there are four more episodes left to cover. So let's see what they're about. Hunted had a nice final, but we haven't seen those pesky Oni that have been talked about so many times. Well, let's hope they march into the show. Get it because it's called March of the Oni? Garbadon tries to convince Lloyd to let him out to help him defeat them. But Lloyd's not a fan of that idea. The theme song this time depicts the events of every season so far, which is really cool and very final feeling. Ninjago is being rebuilt, and Cole, Zane, and Pixel are stuck in traffic. They have places to be, like the harbor, to get a gift. The commissioner speaks of a mayor that we've never seen, so... And no, it's not the same mayor as the one in Crystallized. I bring this up because this city has, or had, a royal family, as well as a mayor. Anyway, the gift is a new bounty, because the last one got a bit beat up. Jay is preparing to ask Nia to marry him, with Kai's help. In comes da. In comes da. <sighs> Hello, Dareth. I can't help myself. A mural is painted on the monastery wall of all the adventures they've been on. There is one from Skybound, which brings up an important question. How do they know about that? I guess Jay and Nair could have told them about it. They bring up the Tornado of Creation, which they haven't done since season one. Firstborn crashes into Ninjago with Faith in tow. I know everyone's scared and confused about Faith's crash landing, but look at the suits. I really like these ones. So slick and elegant. Wu describes something Faith told him. A darkness washing over the first realm, with everyone touched by it getting frozen. Wu thinks this darkness isn't Oni, but it is. The realm crystal starts to leak that same darkness, taking over Ninjago and its people. The ninjas rely on using their powers against the cloud, but nothing happens. Cole is almost swallowed by the evil fart, but Lloyd saves him. Let's hope that doesn't happen again. Lloyd is left with no other choice but to release Garmadon. Garmadon is actually freaking everyone out, which is a reference to that season one episode where the same thing happened. Holy shit, Garmadon just turned off the thrusters. What a chad. I don't know why Garmadon is acting like a child. See, I thought Garmadon remembered everything before, but he was just evil now. But no, he doesn't really remember anything. Cole finds out about Jay's engagement plan, and he's very excited. This is so refreshing after the whole love triangle bullshit in season three. Garmadon devises a plan to destroy the realm crystal, but that's in the middle of all the dark fart. He can enter because he's an Oni, so he wants to go alone. Obviously no one likes this plan, so Lloyd is going with him because he's part Oni as well. As soon as they give Garmadon a sword, 
sword. He starts to attack everyone. Oh wait, now his powers are back. Oh, okay, bye. Lloyd jumps after him. And hey, Lloyd survived. They wander through Ninjago, seeing all the frozen people. There are people still in Ninjago unfrozen, and they send a distress call to the bounty. Pixel stays behind to grab the fart boys when they are done, and everyone else heads off. Yo, Oni! Garmadon's powers are very effective against the Oni. I think Lloyd's powers should be doing something as well. His are literally the four elements of creation rolled into one. Before they can smash the crystal, the Omega Oni steps out and rolls them with his big stick. You wanna see some callbacks? Lloyd uses the Sword of Sanctuary from Season 5 to destroy the Realm Crystal. Lamau, that was pointless as the Omega can just summon more Oni. In their escape, they pass the Serpentine Generals' staff, armor worn by the Vermilion and the Overlord's Golden Master armor, which repels the Oni. They escape again. The ninja help the people onto the bounty, but Cole almost falls into the cloud. Whew, that was a close one. Uh-oh. Cole falls into the black cloud. This is one of my least favorite parts of the whole show. They play this up like it's a huge character death with sad music playing and the characters being muted, but it's so forced. First off, we all know it's gonna be a fake out death because the show loves to do them. Second, even if he does succumb to the fart clouds, he won't die. It was said by Garmadon earlier that the people are not dead, just asleep. Maybe that's the fall itself that'll kill him, but that doesn't even matter because they spoil it in the same episode that he survives. Pixel gets the father and son, but she runs out of fuel, so luckily the ninja arrived to catch them. Lloyd is caught up on Cole's death, in quotes, but Garmadon recognizes that the plot point is dumb and insists they keep moving. Lloyd is sick of his father's bullshit and blows up at him. This actually leads to a scene I really enjoy. Garmadon has a sincere talk with Vinny from the news, and it's a sweet moment. I'm kind of glad they continue this dynamic and crystallize. Even Kai and Nia have a nice moment. And another thing, I like how Kai's blacksmithing is relevant after all these years. Yeah, he melts down the Golden Master armor and reforges the golden weapons. The Scythe of Quakes doesn't have a wielder, however, as he's a little busy at the moment. Cole summons his drill car he left in the first episode and makes his way to the monastery. The only don't really seem like that much of a threat, except the Omega. Cole returns and thankfully ends the whole, oh no, Cole is dead plotline. Garmadon transforms into his Oni form, which looks goofy as hell. Wasn't he always in his Oni form? Whatever, he gets his own big stick now. The Omega destroys the gross Garmadon, so they retreat into the monastery. In the middle of all this conflict, Jay pops the question, and she says yes. Lloyd devises a plan to use the tornado of creation with everyone, even Garmadon in it. This, um, wipes out the Oni? I actually don't know. Lloyd is transported to somewhere, and he meets the first Binjitsu master, and he talks. He praises Lloyd and offers Lloyd to go with him and leave his friends. Lloyd opts to stay with his friends in Ninjago and forgets it ever happened. The far clouds are gone and everyone celebrates. Garmadon leaves and the ninja sign the memorial. That was great and all, but where did the Oni go? Did they get disintegrated? And so concludes Ninjago, at least the first part. This would have been an excellent but underwhelming place to finish the franchise. It does feel very conclusive, but I'm happy that continued just because I love these characters. This has been such a long video, my throat hurts from talking. So I'll see you in the next video.